What's up, nerds and geeks? My name is OMG, WTF, LOL, FTW, BRB. Welcome back to more Total Extreme Wrestling 2016. We are playing as the WWF in the year 2002. Booking the invasion angle officially on the road to WrestleMania as we make our way into the Royal Rumble, the final major show. I mean, we still got heat to do, but final major show before the Royal Rumble. Rumble will be uploaded this week. I'm aiming for uh, Sunday, and mostly because I, I kind of want to do Sunday because it kind of ties in with what I'm doing on Saturday. If you guys didn't see a video, uh, I'm going to go ahead and, you know, promote it a little bit here because this is something I'd like a lot of people to kind of tune into, so if this is something you're into or, you know, sounds like something you'd be into, definitely come in and join uh, or look up the video on my YouTube channel this Saturday on my Twitch channel around like, let's say, 3.30, 4 o'clock. We're going to be doing a WWE versus New Japan Pro Wrestling Fire Pro uh, pay-per-view thing. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm excited about it. I spent hours last night, you know, editing the rosters to make sure it's easier to maneuver. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'd love to see you guys there. Like I said, go ahead and find that video. Uh, the video is not just an announcement. It also showcases all the matches that we're going to see, minus one. I put in like a little bit of a last-minute match that I decided to do, which will be like Hideo Itami slash Kenta versus CJ Parker. It's kind of like, I, I want to call it the Battle of Pro the Projects because it's like, they're, you know, CJ was from NXT, Hideo Itami was from, you know, Japan, not necessarily New Japan. So I kind of want to call it the Battle of the Projects, but I also have Shinsuke and Nakamura, which is kind of like the Battle of the Pet Project. So, but that's going to be another match. But like I said, go ahead and check that video out to see all the matches that are going to be taking place. And uh, I'd love to see you guys there on Saturday. You're probably going to hear me promote this a little bit more throughout the week. But yeah, I'm going to try to get the Royal Rumble and Sunday Night Heat up here on Sunday as well. So kind of play on there. But Royal Rumble, either way, will be up this week. Enough rambling, though. I've got what i got out to say. Got my little bit of self-promotion out of the way. Let us go ahead and run this show. The Go Home so Show, the final Nitro before... <laughs> before the pay-per-view. Let's cheat a little bit there, because Daphne apparently suffered an injury, and she's got a big match this pay-per-view. So we're going to... We're going to ignore that that happened. We have an abysmal pre-show match here as Daphne goes over Sarah Del Rey in 5 minutes, 48 seconds with the Daphne's. Uh, Sarah Del Rey, I'm sure many of you guys know who she is. Sarah Amato, I believe is what she's well known for now because uh, she's like the head female trainer in NXT. One of the best female wrestlers ever, apparently. I personally have never really seen her work, so I don't have an opinion. But uh, she had strong ratings in the game, and it was the first time I've seen Sarah Del, Rey, Sarah Del Rey, so I figured why the hell not have her uh, put over Daphne. Raven doing some good work ringside, Daphne not getting injured this time. Sarah Del Rey with a 17, so not the best in ring performance. In fact, I wouldn't even call it the worst. I mean, I wouldn't even say it's not the worst either. It's pretty bad, but uh, she's still a rookie, so the thing that's... Of notice here, though, Nerds and Geeks, for one, not only did Daphne have a 49 in-ring performance, but the crowd's not complaining anymore. I was a little hesitant to, you know, say, hey, maybe we got it done on Monday Night Raw because I wasn't sure if it was just because it was a tag team match. But no, there's still no complaining about, uh, you know, not wanting Daphne there. So I don't remember if I actually went into this database system and fixed something. Maybe her sex appeal, I'm not sure. Maybe we just got the fans to... Get over it, now they like Daphne. Either way, they're not complaining that Daphne's wrestling, which definitely eases my worries for this Sunday's match. Speaking of this Sunday, the Boogie Knights have a big night, but uh, tonight they got the Haas brothers as they get a 50D+. Plus. Terrible wrestling, but in non-existent crowd heat. Boogie Knights, Disco Inferno, and Das Wunder Kid. Alex Wright going over Charlie and Russ Haas. And 8 minutes, 25 seconds, when Alex Wright goes over Russ Haas with the bridging German suplex. Uh, Russ was really off his game and apparently has a gimmick that is getting stale. That's all on you, uh, OVW, I think. Maybe it was HWA? Don't remember. Either way, Charlie Haas with a 36, Russ Haas with a 32, Das Wunder Kid with a 56, and Disco Inferno with a 55. 
Alex Wright is also improving in performance. Let's open up the show, nerds and geeks. Opening up the show with a 99 A-star rating here. Thursday Night Nitro opens up with the WCW World Champion, Kurt Angle. He's making his way down to the ring. He's wearing a nice suit. He's waving to the crowd. He's kissing babies. Pretty much like he's running for president right now. I'm going to fix the mic a little bit, push that back. Hopefully it doesn't affect anything. I just don't want to write right next to me. Either way, he's going down to the ring. He's, he's Like I said, it looks like he's campaigning to be president. Uh, he gets into the ring. We have the podium set up once again. He walks up to the podium. He shuffles like papers because he's written down a, a script, I guess, or a speech. And he uh, begins to speak. And he says, uh, Hello and welcome everyone to Thursday Night Nitro! Tonight is going to be a great not great show, and I'm sorry, but if I could just take a moment of your time, I have something that I'd like to address. Since winning this title, I have been at a, on a campaign to end the war between WWF and WCW. And believe it or not, believe it or not, people, we are making progress. We've seen friendships form between men who should be enemies. Enemies coming to enemies' aid. A war is not what we need. What we need is a company merger. Not only is it best for both WCW and the WWF, but it's best for the fans. With the talent from both companies, can you imagine the content that we could produce? But guys, this Sunday, that, this dream is in danger. This Sunday, I put the WCW world title up against my greatest opponent. The man many people say that I can't beat. Well, at least now that he's got the dirtiest player in the game helping him. Guys, if I lose this title this Sunday, the dream isn't dead, but it's slowly going to fade away. And classify itself as obsolete. <clears throat> Who said that? <laughs> anyway. Where was I? Slowly fade, because it's hard to get your voice across an enemy territory unless you've got something they want. Which is why I can't lose which is why I won't lose this Sunday. Not just for the WWF. Not just for WCW. But for the fans. And uh, that's when Chris Benoit's music goes off because the Crippler, the Canadian Crippler, and the Nature Boy have heard enough of Kurt Angle's speech here, his uh, little self-promotion or campaign, whatever you want to call it. I try to make that promo sound like a presidential campaign, pretty much. So uh, if I accomplish that, cool. If not, I tried. Rick comes out, of course, both of them come out, Rick and Benoit, and Rick takes the mic and he says, Kurt, what the hell are you doing? You're out here dressed like a monkey, pandering to these people like they give a damn what you gotta say. These people don't want friendship. They want blood. They want war. And then another thing, but before he can uh, keep going on, he, he can't even finish the word thing because Chris Benoit puts his hand Right over the mic, nerds and geeks. I don't know if you guys heard me too well. I put my hand over the mic to kind of simulate it, but whatever. There's no webcam on, so I don't know why I did that. He puts his hand over the mic, grabs it from Ric Flair, and uh, he goes on to say, And another thing, Kurt. This Sunday, you will lose. I'm going to end your pathetic dream when you tap out and they crown me as the true WCW World Champion. And uh, that's kind of the end of the promo, at least you would think it would be, because uh, Chris Benoit and Ric Flair go to walk off like they're done saying what they wanted to say. But uh, Kurt's not done, because uh, he's ready. And he goes, hey, wh wait a minute. Where are you guys going? I thought this was a debate. You didn't even give me a chance to rebuttal. But you know, Chris, you're right. There's a time for talking, and there's a time for fighting. So what do you say, boys? How about you find your? How about I find myself a partner and we give these fans a little preview for this Sunday? And then uh, Ben Wall just you know looks at me shaking his head and he's just like you know what Kurt that's fine. You want to get your ass kicked early that's fine with me. But one catch, no Diamond Dallas Page. We all know what side of the fence he stands on. <laughs> Sorry guys, you heard my cat there. I had a mover. <laughs> I want you to find a true. WCW guy. Someone that bleeds WCW. Not some senile old man who's turned his back on us too many times to count. And, uh, you know, Kurt kind of, he fires back and he goes, 
you know, or DDP, maybe DDP is starting to see that this company merger isn't so far off. But you know what, Chris, that's fine. I'll, I'll find someone else not named DDP. Oh, it's true. It's damn true. And then Kurt's music goes off. I'd imagine, you know, Jim Ross, not Jim Ross, Dusty Rose, Tanae, Bobby Heenan are all like, well, Kurt Angle's going to find himself a partner that bleeds WCW tonight, or, you know, pretty much putting over the fact that we are going to see a tag team match tonight. 99A star, hell yeah. Considering Chris Benoit was rated on entertainment, which, believe it or not, nerds and geeks, he isn't as bad as you would think. I looked it up, you know, before I made this video, and uh, while I was booking the show, and to my surprise, Ben Wall's like in the 70s with his entertainment. Guaranteed, I mean, Ric Flair has probably helped him out being his manager, which that was kind of the point. But it's good to see it actually worked. So uh, apparently we did deserve better announcing because Bobby Heenan and Tanae were both pretty weak. It did get the show off to a strong start, got the crowd hotter. Kurt looked good, Ric Flair looked good. Ben Wall was just kind of there. And uh, yeah, like I said, we have a we officially have a main event tonight. Kurt Angle's going to find himself a partner. Did I fuck up? I don't know if I messed up, so I'm going to keep going on. If worst comes to worst, we messed up and I put it in the wrong place. But we're going to keep moving on. We open up the night with a solid 78B. I really think I messed up, though. I think I either messed up or skipped over something. 78 solid B here. Opening tag team match, Edge and Eddie Guerrero. Of course, Edge being the United States champion and Eddie Guerrero being the number one contender to the Canadian championship. Battling Lance Storm and Chuck Palumbo. Chuck Palumbo, the number one contender to Edge's U.S. title. And uh, Storm is the current Canadian championship. Edge and Eddie go over Lance Storm and Chuck Palumbo when uh, Eddie Guerrero defeats Lance Storm with a quick, fast roll-up. So I'd imagine maybe uh, Lance getting distracted by Chavo. Eddie rolls him up for a quick pin. I'd even imagine Eddie grabbing the tights. This is Latino heat we're talking about. One, two, three. Eddie Guerrero wins. I imagine, you know, announcers being like, if that happens this Sunday, we have a new Canadian champion. Stuff like that. Uh, Edge and Eddie, they don't work well as a team, apparently. Timing all over the place, so that's good to know. Despite getting a solid B with each other. <laughs> uh, Eddie Guerrero with a 69 in-ring performance. The weakest of all four, four men. Chuck Palumbo with a 74 along with Edge, so both Edge and Chuck with the 74, and Lance Storm with a 77, the best in-ring performance of the night, or in the match. Chuck Palomo is improving in rumble skills as we move on to the next segment. All right, so I did mess up. This was supposed to be before that matchup, so if you guys want to pretend it was before, you go right ahead. Uh, that was my bad. So 78, solid B rating here. We're backstage. We're in Commissioner Regal's office. He's along with the WCW Tag Team Champions Power Plant. They're watching the TV, you know, watching the show on TV. Uh, when the number one contenders to the tag team, tag team titles walk in, and uh, yeah, they walk in. You get where I'm going with this. I don't know why I stalled there. Either way, they're startled. They kind of just barge right in. It's not like they walked in. And Regal's like, bloody hell, do you two not know how to knock? And uh, Re Canyon, he doesn't care. He goes, Shut up, Regal. What I'm here for, I don't need to knock. You think just because you gave me an opportunity to prove myself against the WCW champion last week that I forgot? Forgot how you and your goon squad to try to take, tried to take my partner out? Or how you tried to trick me into ditching you? I think you're scared because you know this Sunday, Morris and I are walking out the new WCW Tag Team Champions. And uh, Regal goes on to say, well, I must say, but... Canyon's not having it. Like I said, Canyon cuts him off again. He goes, and as I was saying, did you think I'd forget my challenge last week? Maybe you did, but I sure as hell didn't. And then uh, Regal's just like, what are you going on about? And Canyon steps up again. He says, last week, you dodged me by putting me up against Angle. But this week, my schedule's free. I don't want Goon 1 or Goon 2. I want the weasel in the middle. I don't know if I uh, continued on with this. So let's see. No, I did not. So he goes on saying, I want the weasel in the middle or something. Uh, I, I didn't finish the promo because I, I, I got pretty much what I wanted across. End it how you guys would like. Maybe Regal is just like, I don't know. Either way, pretty much what we're going here is, if you watched last week's episode, can you challenge William Regal or Lord Steven Regal to one-on-one -on -one action? Regal instead decided to put him in a match against Kurt Angle, trying to sell it as an opportunity to show him that he doesn't need Hugh Morris. Canyon had his match. He lost. Whatever. 
But uh, Canyon hasn't forgotten. He still wants Regal, and we're going to have Canyon versus Steven Regal tonight. Canyon got, is uh, getting better at his gimmick, got the crowd hotter, and Canyon came across well. All good stuff. Also, this will not be the last time we see Power Plant tonight. They've they got a pretty busy night coming up. All right. <laughs> so this doesn't even make sense now at all. Uh, this was supposed to be after the match, so I guess let's just pretend that that angle happened before. Then we went on to our Edge and Eddie Guerrero match with uh, Chuck Palumbo and Storm. And now we're after the match again, guys. All right. 85 B plus rating here. Uh, Storm and Palumbo, they lost, but they don't care. Pretty much a generic beatdown. Palumbo gets in the ring. Storm gets in the ring. They're beating down on Edge. They're beating down on Eddie Guerrero. Hell, they're even beating down on Chavo Guerrero. And then uh, they just stand tall. Stacy Keebler's raising both their arms in the air with Chuck Palumbo holding up the U.S. title. Lance Storm holding up the Canadian title. Stuff like that while Edge, Chavo, and Eddie all sell. Uh, Eddie Guerrero is getting better at his gimmick, as is Stacy. All good. Eddie looked good. Edge looked good. The performance of Chuck Palumbo was good. All in all, good segment, guys. 85B+. Plus. Was not expecting that. Moving into the next segment, we go to a 70C+. Plus rating here. We're backstage with Mean Gene Okerlund, and he uh, goes on to say, all right, fans, Mean Gene here, and joining me at this time is the team that I'm dubbing, dubbing Team Unity. Brad Jaw from the WWF, the WCW Cruiserweight Champion Billy Kidman from WCW, and Tommy Dreamer and Sabu from ECW. Gentlemen, tonight you take on Raven and his flock, a group of individuals all four of you have had problems with, but one has to wonder if you four are going to be able to trust each other. And uh, Bradshaw goes, look, Mean Gene, I'm going to stop you there. I don't give a damn that Billy and Tommy and Sabu are from different companies. You know, maybe Kurt Angle's got a point. Maybe we need to stop looking at separate companies and start looking at the industry as a whole. At the end of the day, all four of us are wrestlers. And all four of us have our issues with the flock. And no matter who pays our bills, all four of us are going to walk out there. And we're going to go work together. And we're going to... I fucked that up. Let's try this again. All four of us are going to go out there. We're going to work together. And we're going to whoop Raven in the flock's ass. And then that's when we hear <laughs> clapping off screen. And as we, uh, you know, camera pans over, we see the WCW World Champion Kurt Angle as he walks into the screen. And he's clapping and he goes, boy, I just want to wish all four of you the best of luck tonight. You have no idea how happy I am to see my dream become a reality. You four men, men from three different companies, putting this petty war to the side to focus on your own issues. But you four aren't going to be the end of the un of an unho- <clears throat> What? I don't know where I was going with what I was- Pretty much, I guess he says, but you four aren't going to be the end- Oh, okay, never mind. But you four aren't going to be the end of Unholy Alliances tonight. And then he goes- Good luck, guys. So, what I was trying to say before I overthought it, pretty much, is um, Kurt Angle's pretty much saying that, you know, this mix of, you know, team unity of all these guys aren't going to be the only, you know, the, the only uh, unholy alliance, pretty much, because he himself has to find somebody who uh, bleeds WCW, who's a true WCW guy, pretty much. Pretty much, Kurt Angle's going to have to sell somebody his pitch to get in the team with him. Uh, either way, Bradshaw came across well. Kurt Angle came out looking excellent. Uh, mean Gene underperformed, which is unfortunate for him. And Bradshaw is developing better performance skills. Good on you guys. I believe we're moving on to that said match next, though, aren't we? We are. 74 B minus coming back from the commercial break as we have uh, the Team Unity, Bradshaw, Tommy Dreamer, Sabu, and Billy Kidman, team of uh, WCW, ECW, and WWF guys. Take it on the flock, Raven, Vampiro, and Bradshaw and Perry, or not Bradshaw, Big Boss Man and Perry Saturn. Decent wrestling, not much Wayne Heat. Raven, Vampiro, and the flock do go over Bradshaw, Dreamer, Sabu, and Kidman. In 10 minutes, 36 seconds, when Raven defeats the, defeats the, defeats Tommy Dreamer with the uh, Raven effect after a distraction from Daphne. So, classic Raven and Tommy Dreamer. <laughs> uh, Tori Wilson doing good some, cause, uh, let's slow down, shall we? Tori Wilson did some good work ringside. Billy Kidman with an in-ring performance of 52. Sabu with a 62. Tommy Dreamer with an impressive 67. Especially for an opener. Good lord, he's going to be good. I have confidence in Tommy Dreamer right now. 
Bradshaw with a 77. Looks like that was the best of the match. Perry Saturn with a 67. Boss Man with a 58. Vampiro with a 71. And Raven with a 75. So it looks like, like I said before, Bradshaw with the best in-ring performance. And it looks like Billy Kidman had the worst. So we move on to the uh, next segment here. Just a freestyle segment showing uh, DDP walking towards the ring. We lead into a 97 A-star rating here, Nerds and Geeks. We're back from the commercial. Out comes Diamond Dallas Page, who makes his way down to the ring. He's got a big smile on his face. He's happy. Once in the ring, he takes the mic, and he starts to talk to the crowd. And he says, wow, thank you. You know, there's been a lot of rumors flying around about my loyalty to this company. Some people point to my recent friendship with The Rock... Others think that I'm drinking Kurt Angle's Kool-Aid. I'm here to tell you, none of that's true. Sure, me and Dwayne are friends, but let's be honest. Shane and WCW would be fools not to offer the freaking Rock a contract. And look, I'm not saying that this is the reason I'm friends with Rock, because it's not. But you know, having a friend who always, you know, who works for the other side always makes things better. You know, you cut my wrist, I bleed, WCW, despite what Chris Benoit would say. Which is why when I win my very first Royal Rumble, I'm going to talk to the boss and I'm going to see what our next move is. Instead of putting myself, or others, like some people, <coughs> Chris Benoit, huh. excuse me, I had a tickle in my throat. But one thing's for damn certain, no matter what happens in this year's Rumble, no, let me let me move down here. And this year's no matter what happens in this year's rumble, it's gonna end in a bang. And he does the whole, you know, bang like DDP taunt. And uh that's when the giant's music goes off. Well, it's the giant, whatever you want to call him. It's a big bad giant. Oh yeah. <laughs> out comes giant, he comes out laughing, uh, he's like, You're you're joking, right? Do you really think that you're going to win the Royal Rumble? You? Trust me, Paige. At your age, the only thing you're winning is bingo. But all, look, all jokes aside, you can come out and try to spin it however you want. But we all see through you, Paige. Your friendship with The Rock isn't about bringing him over to WCW. It's about having options. Because despite what you say, you really don't, you really do only care about yourself. And I'm not the only one noticing it. And then that's when we have Ron Simmons, Scott and Rick Steiner, Mark Jindrak and Sean Stasiak at the power plant. They all make their way out right next to the Giant. And uh, Giant goes on to say, You see, we are just a small example of the men in the back that see right through you, Paige. And you winning the Royal Rumble is the worst thing that could happen to WCW. So despite the unlikeliness... We're still going to make sure that you don't even make it to Sunday. So pretty much despite the unlikeliness of you winning the Rumble, we're still going to make sure you don't want to make it to Sunday. All six men make their way down to the ring. We got Giant. We got both Steiners. We got Ron Simmons. And we got Power Plant. All big guys. They're making their way down to the ring. They get in the ring. They surround Diamond Dallas Page. It's not looking good for DDP. And then finally, Goldberg. His music goes off. He makes his way, you know, he starts making his entrance, the firework entrance. He breathes it in. Uh, Ron Simmons, he's not waiting for Goldberg. He gets out of the ring and decides he's going to meet Goldberg right at the rampway. He pays for it because Goldberg goes running right at him. Hits him with the spear. Yeah, Ron Simmons is pretty much taken out. He slides into the ring. While he slides into the ring, he gets jumped by Sean Stasiak and Mark Jindrak. You know, they're, they're beating each other. You know, they're beating up freaking uh, Goldberg right now. Uh this happened before, so, you know, everyone's distracted by uh, Goldberg's music. Diamond Dallas Page took a, advantage of him, you know, everyone being distracted and hit Ron, or Scott, excuse me, hit Rick Steiner with the diamond cutter, so taking him out temporarily. So, technically, Ron Simmons and Rick Steiner have been taken out. We got Power Plant beating down on Goldberg. We got Scott Steiner and the Giant taking turns beating down on freaking uh, Diamond Dallas Page. Uh, Goldberg, he manages to fight back, you know, the WCW Tag Team Champions. He uh, sends them both out of the ring. Sean Stasiak, 
Mark Jindrak both tossed out of the ring because, you know, if that happens at the Royal Rumble, they'd be eliminated, stuff like that. Uh, he then goes over to Scott Steiner. He pulls Scott off a page. He's beating Scott, you know, Scott Steiner off. Uh, Giant, he attempts to, you know, go come to Scott Steiner's aid as well because, you know, DDP's just pretty much laying there. But uh, apparently DDP wasn't just laying there because while Giant turns his back, Page just jumps on DDP's back, starts clawing at its eyes. Uh, Goldberg tosses Scott Steiner out of the ring too, taking him out. And then Giant, he finally manages to get Page off of him, just grabs him by the hair and, like, you know, maybe tosses him off him like that. But, um... That little page, you know, ended up costing, or not little page, I guess so. That little distraction ended up costing the Giant because he tosses Diamond Dallas Page off just to get hit by a spear from Goldberg. You know, of course, he rolls out of the ring. Goldberg and DDP are the only two left in the ring. Uh, they're standing tall. Goldberg raises Diamond Dallas Page in the air. They're celebrating, and then Goldberg decides to pull in Diamond Dallas Page. He's not quite done yet. Hits the jackhammer on him. And then he tosses Diamond Dallas Page out of the ring as well. He points to the WrestleMania sign, pretty much saying, you know, signaling that I'm winning the Royal Rumble this year. So Goldberg just single-handedly cleared the ring from Ron Simmons, the Steiners, Giant, Power Plant, and Diamond Dallas Page. Looking good. Also, I haven't talked about it, but I'm sure you guys might have noticed. We had a couple of, you know, we had a backstage, backstage incident. Vince McMahon, us, passing along psychology to Shane McMahon. And he'll work to Stephanie McMahon. So there you have that. 97A star Bobby Heenan and Mike Tanay pretty weak. Diamond Dallas Page came across well. Unfortunately, Rick Steiner did underperform. Goldberg definitely came across well. Mark Jindrak is developing better performance skills as well. Good on you guys. We then move into a 98A star rating. Backstage, we see Kurt Angle. He walks up to the door. And uh, when he walks into the door, we notice that it's uh, Shane McMahon's office. Well, he doesn't walk into the door. When we he, The camera pans up to the door, and we see it's Shane's office. Angle knocks on the door before walking in, and we see Shane and Booker. They're talking, and Booker immediately stands up. He goes, the hell do you want? And then Shane, he, you know, he's holding Booker back, and he's like, e easy, Book. Kurt, what the hell do you want? And then Kurt responds, look, Shane, with all due respect, I'm not here to talk to you. I'm here to talk the book. And what makes you think I want to talk to you? And uh, Kurt Angle responds by saying, You don't have to talk, but please just listen. I know that you know that tonight that I've got Chris Benoit and Ric Flair in tag team action. And uh, Shane sees where this is going. He immediately steps in and he goes, All right, Kurt, just stop. That's enough. And then Book's like, Nah, let him talk, Shane. And then Shane is just kind of like, are you serious? Whatever, you know, but whatever. Kurt Angle then continues on to say, uh, look, I'm not asking you to support my cause because I know you won't. But I know that you've got your problems with Rick, especially after last week when I had to come to your aid when the two of them jumped you. And uh, Booker T kind of taken aback by that. He goes, you didn't have to do anything. I didn't ask for that. But you know, Kurt, for once, you got a point. Rick did me dirty last week for the second week in a row. Hold on, guys. All right, here we go. <clears throat> For the second week in a row, so save your speech, Kurt. I'm in. And uh, Shane's just kind of like, whoa, 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 Book, you can't be serious. And uh, Booker T's like, save it, Shane. This isn't an, an endorsement from me. This is business. Besides, you helped me out last week when you didn't have to. So tonight, after tonight, consider us even. And Kurt's like, fair enough. I'll see you out there, partner. And he extends his hand, and Booker T just kind of looks at Kurt's hand like, man, are you fucking serious? And he goes, man, I ain't shaking your hand. Get the hell out of here. And uh, Kurt leaves, and Book's just kind of like, you got to be kidding me. So the unthinkable has happened. Kurt Angle has got the most WCW guy, Booker T, to join his cause. All because Ric Flair has pissed him off. Although he's made it clear he doesn't support Kurt Angle's cause. He's just, you know, helping him out tonight. Uh, Kurt and Booker T both enjoy, or, you know, improvise pretty well. Uh, Booker T apparently clearly enjoyed having the freedom going off script. He, he did really good, apparently. Shane McMahon, the guy who wanted to go off a of script, the reason we are off script, didn't even really do much. Thanks a lot, buddy. Uh, Heenan was weak, which is unfortunate. We'll have to get rid of Bobby Heenan at some point. Booker and Kurt Angle were both good with their performances. As we move on to the next segment here, Ta uh, tag team action. What the hell am I talking about? 
One on one action here. Solid. What in hand? Sam's hell is a solid. A little SpongeBob humor for everybody. Anyway, solid 77 B rating here. We have a bout that had good wrestling and a decent reaction from the crowd. Canyon going over Lord Steven Regal in 10 minutes, 24 seconds. When uh, Lord Steven Regal got disqualified after both Mark Jindrak and Sean Stasiak ran in. So things were looking good for Canyon. Maybe he was going to hit the flatliner when finally Power Plant gets involved, leading to the disqualification. And uh, as we'll see in the next segment, also a beatdown. Canyon with an 82 in ring performance to Steven Regal, 76. Regal is improving in performance. We go into the next segment here, which gets a solid 82 B rating here. Uh, like I said, Jindrak and Stasiak, along with Regal, they're beating down on Canyon. Morris tries to get involved, but he's getting beaten down on too. Eventually, though, Canyon and Hugh Morris manage to fight their way back. They send, you know, oh, I remember what I was going with this. So I, they're, they're beating up. I'd imagine, you know, Sean Stasiak holds Canyon up, waiting for Regal to hit him with the power of the punch. Uh, he does. Sean, or excuse me, Canyon ducks, and Regal accidentally hits, what was I going with this? Accidentally hits uh, Sean Stasiak, so there goes Sean Stasiak, and uh, Canyon, you know, tries to go after Regal. Regal, you know, abandons ship. Canyon and Hugh Morris then, you know, do their double team move, whatever the hell it is, on Mark Jindrak, and then pose with the tag team titles before tossing them out, you know. Tossing them at him, pretty much, you know, saying that, you know, we're going to win this Sunday, things like that. Things are looking good. For Canyon and Hugh Morris tonight. Moving on to the next segment here. Solid 90 A rating. Backstage with Mean Gene once again. Alright fans, Mean Gene here in just a few moments. My guest at this time, the Nature Boy Ric Flair and the King of the Ring, Chris Benoit, will be in action against the WCW World Champion, Kurt Angle and Booker T. Rick, what is your reaction to Booker T siding with Kurt Angle? And uh, Flair goes, Mean Gene... Booker can try to spin it however he wants, but I think this past month we've really gotten to see how self-assessed Booker T is really about himself. He's the one that lost the world championship to Kurt Angle, and yet he expects another opportunity when my protege, Chris Benoit, earned his title shot by winning the King of the Ring. But he expects another opportunity despite Kurt never beating my protege. And then what does Book do? He gets Shane McMahon to put my spot in the Royal Rumble on the line. Mine! And then Book flukes his way into a victory, and now I'm out of the Rumble. Rick freaking Flair out of the Rumble. So yeah, we jumped him. You're damn right. And he had it coming. But now, he'll stoop so low to align himself with that hippie Kurt Angle? What a joke. If I was Shane, I'd fire him right now. Hold on, let me get down there, guys. But of course... Shane won't fire his best friend. I mean, how the hell did the Mean Street Posse even have a job? But I digress. Come on, champ. Let's go. And uh, Rick and Benoit, they walk off ready for their uh, tag team match coming up. Mean Gene goes, well, I'd say Rick Flair is fired up, wouldn't you guys? Flair and Benoit versus Kurt Angle and Booker T right after this commercial break. And uh, we lead into the commercial break. And you'll see as we come back, we will go right into said tag team matchup. So let's save that. Bobby Heenan was pretty weak. Flair was fantastic. Benoit was fantastic. So we go into the tag team match here. Solid 81 B rating here. We have an exceptional match. Kurt Angle and Booker T going over Chris Benoit and Ric Flair. When uh, Ric Flair got himself intentionally disqualified while fighting Kurt Angle. So um, maybe a low blow. Something happens. Pokes him in the eye. Either way. Things were looking good for Benoit and Angle and Flair, Benoit and Angle, Booker T and Angle, and then Flair just wasn't having it, got himself disqualified, and uh, there you have it. Booker T had an in-ring performance of a 90, the worst in the match, which is saying something compared to, you know, when it's 90. Uh, Kurt Angle with a 92, Ric Flair and Chris Benoit both with 94s. Did lose heat for the segment, though, which is unfortunate. Chris Benoit is improving in performance as we... I never put in that final segment. I was going to say as we end off the show with an angle, but uh, as soon as I was going to click it, I noticed that we didn't have the angle. Pretty much what the angle was going to be. Let's just say it has, it pretend it happened, if you can, guys. Uh, Benoit and Flair were, you know, 
pretty much doing what Power Plant was doing to Canyon and Morris just a few minutes ago. They're beating down on uh, Kurt Angle. And it doesn't look like Booker's going to help. Booker just starts walking away. He's just like, whatever, you know, that I don't care. I, I did my job. That's it. But then, you know, Booker, he has a bit of a change of heart. He remembers Kurt Angle helping him last week. Races down to the ring. Starts fighting them off. We have Kurt and Booker both working together, fighting off Benoit and Flair. They get him out of the ring. And then finally, Kurt Angle, he, you know, he looks at Booker T again, and he shakes his, he no, not shakes his hand. He extends his hand out one more time to Booker T, like looking at him. Booker finally looks at the hand, and he just kind of like, does one of those quick handshakes, like, yeah, whatever, let's go real quick. And he walks out while Kurt's just sitting there, like, nodding his head, kind of. In a way, Booker T kind of gives his, like, approval, but it doesn't really happen because he's just shaking his hand because, like, yeah, whatever, I got you too. So that was supposed to be the ending segment of, like, everyone going, like, oh, is Booker T siding with, with, uh, what's his name? I forgot to put it on there, though, so there you have it. Um, apparently we got fantastic reviews. Oh, HWA uh, had a show as well. So we had HWA and OVW, both with shows last night. So we'll have to check those out. Apparently, uh, Shark Boy is extremely frustrated. Hasn't, uh, hasn't worked a show in over six months. He's never even wrestled. Huh. Interesting. But yeah, poor Shark Boy. And uh, apparently Otto Wands became the uh, new head booker of HWF last night. Hmm. Interesting. So it uh, looks like HWA was... Uh, oh, HWF. Never mind. I was thinking... So what is HWF? I forget what that is. It's not my guys, obviously, but whatever. We'll start with OVW, Breaking Point 2002. Got a solid 45D rating here. We open up the night with Nikita retaining her OVW Women's Championship against cheerleader Melissa with a 34 rating. We then go to a brawl between Taylor Matheny and Gail Kim, which got a 54. John Cena defeats Red Dog by DQ with a 38 rating. Nick Dinsmore and Mark Henry go over the Minnesota Stretching Crew, which is Brock Lesnar and Shelton Benjamin, with a 50 D+. And then finally, in the main event, when the hell did Flash Flanagan even win the OVW Heavyweight Championship? I thought Shannon Moore was the OVW Heavyweight Champion. Well, either way, Flash Flanagan defeats Monty Brown to retain the OVW Heavyweight Championship with a solid 43D. I'm curious. Can I pull this up? We cannot. Let's do this real quick. I could have swore it was Shannon Moore. When did he lose it? Oh, it wasn't even Shannon Moore. That must be HWA I'm thinking of. So, OVW was Rob Conway, which I do remember Rob Conway losing the title. Just totally forgot it was freaking Flash Flanagan. <laughs> Either way, uh, we then move on to HWA, which got a 48 D-plus rating here. I knew Shannon Moore was the world champion. 48 D-plus for HWA's victory, opening up the night with the A squad, which I believe is Chet and Dean, or Jean, yeah, Dean Jabolski going over Future Shock, BJ Whitmer, and... Uh, Logan Kane to retain the HWA Tag Team titles with an E29. We then go to a skit involving, who the hell are you? Kimono Wanalei and Ray Steele with a 47D. We then move on to uh, Yang defeating Matt Stryker, the one with the unibrow, to retain his HWA Cruiserweight Championship with a 45 solid D. We have a confrontation involving Terry Funk and Elix Skipper, which got a 47. Corporal Cajun and D'Lo Brown going over the Island Boys in a 44 solid D. Island Boys, of course, are Ikumu and uh, Kimu, better known as Umaga and maybe the superhero in training to some of you. And then finally, in the main event, Shannon Moore going over former three-count brethren Evan Courageous with a 52 solid D-plus rating here to retain his HWA Heavyweight Championship. Uh, Amy Dumas apparently has now changed her body type to toned, which is awesome. Apparently Perry Saturn doesn't connect with the fans, and we should probably write him off according to Scott Steiner. Mark Jindrak doesn't connect with the fans. Goldberg. I don't know if I believe you, Goldberg. I'm sorry. But Mark Jindrak? I don't know if I'm going to believe that. <laughs> You're crazy. 
Either way, though, nerds and geeks, I hope you guys have enjoyed this episode of Thursday Night Nitro or Total Extreme Wrestling 2016. If you have, do me a favor, leave me a comment, like, and subscribe if you haven't already. Don't forget to share this video with your friends, your Facebooks, your Twitters, your Instagrams, your social media accounts all over the interwebs. Greatly would appreciate it. It helps the channel grow and uh, helps me out a lot. So thank you guys. And uh, as always, my name is OMG, WTF, LOLTWBRB. Hope to see you guys this Saturday for the WWE vs. New Japan stream that we're going to be doing. Remember, around 3.30, 4 o'clock, Mountain Central Time, or Mountain Standard Time, not Central. And, uh, but yeah, I will see you guys for Sunday Night Heat, which should go up on Sunday along with the Royal Rumble. But until then, you guys have yourselves a wonderful day, and I'll see you guys later. Have a good one.